that's cool, that, man. I, I, dude, I, I think it's just neat when anyone doesn't have a regular job. Like that's the that's the level of fame and success that I start to get impressed by. You know, like oh wait a minute, so you, like you don't have a regular boss? You're nailing it. Like you're crushing it. You, you know, it, it, it's in Kyle's house. Everyone found some uh, like you know alternative way, like whether it be YouTube or Etsy or something like that to mm. uh, to get by without a nine to five and, it, and it's kind of neat when people pull that off i like it yeah i mean it's you know it's one of the goals <laughs> then you know when you're when you're working the nine to five and doing it on the side the nine to five that you hate is kind of like just as big of an inspiration as the love of whatever you do you know the hate of your boss and your coworkers <laughs> and your shitty job and waking up whenever you got to wake up and be, you know you know what i mean you guys already know it's, yeah that's a bigger driving force than anything is, I, that is just being like these people suck. I hate this person that I have to report to. I hate customers, accounts, whatever the hell. Like that to try and get more independent like what he was saying. That's I think that's like 80% of the motivation and the other 20% is like I'm good enough at something to not have to be here, right? Like but mostly it's just god, this fucking sucks. How do people deal with this? I got to find a way out. Which I, everybody here has pretty much I, I, I don't mean to knock him because I, he's a good guy and I admire him and, and he's, he has his strengths. But my last boss at Cisco, I shouldn't have said last boss because now I really targeted him. But like, <laughs> it's going to be hard to get a recommendation now. Yeah, just trust me when I say this. I'm a good bit smarter than he is, you know, and, and I worked for him. And, you know, is it he, because of your Aryan blood? No, no. That's what you told me when the show. Okay, right, right. not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he was an Indian guy, but he just and maybe it could be that because English wasn't his first language. No, that wasn't it. I was really just flat out smarter than he was, <laughs> and, and and yet I worked to him and it worked for him. And every week we had like what they called a one on one. It was just a two person meeting, and you discuss like what you're doing, what you're looking for, etc. And for me, I would treat these things as almost interviews. Like I'd, I'd write down all the bullet points of the things I did the previous week that I could be proud of and be like, I got this done, I got this done, I got this done, I have this on my plate, this is coming up, etc. And just like every week, sell what's so great about me. And, you know, I swear I'd like walk out the door and be like, why the fuck is a like amazing person like me selling myself to that guy? Every week, and it was, um, and he's a good guy, he really is, but it, it was just like, I don't, I, this is disheartening for me, that, like, here I am, just, like, trying to, you know, impress him week after week. Yeah, and, you know, the, the worse the job, the more chances are that you're smarter than the boss. You know, if you have a job you really hate, like, if you're, if you're you know, later in life and you, you, you know, you have to apply at CVS or something, no offense to anybody who works at CVS, but... Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that would suck. And there's a good, a very good chance, like compared to Cisco, that if you work at the gas station or CVS, that it's even more frustrating how much dumber the, than you, the boss. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of those places, they'll just be like, all right, who's been here the longest at this Phillips 66 station? Well, uh, can barely read Tony has been here for 13 <laughs> years because he has no better prospects. Make Tony the manager. And then Mr., you know, doing really well first year out of college comes in for his summer job and he's reporting to a guy that doesn't fully understand basic math or speaking uh, cadences and they can only use the machine rating. so if the cash register ever breaks down i have a fucking meltdown three deep in that line with this guy buying his lotto tickets in the numbskull behind the counter can't figure out the basic math and i've already done the math in my head because i'm sitting there with nothing to do anyway and i'm just sitting there like three dollars and 87 cents that's his fucking change 387 387 387 and like 80 seconds later when she finally goes three dollars and 87 cents i'm just like yeah i know come on <laughs> you get a prize there's a there's a lady at our local gas station and she there's something wrong with her. So uh, she has met Kitty, um, who has a British accent, for anyone who doesn't know, like 50 different times. Like every time Kitty goes in there, though, it's the first time. <laughs> oh, your accent so. Oh, I love your accent. Where are you from? You from England. <laughs> oh, I love that accent. Where you live around here? And and Kitty just has to play along with it day after day after day. Like, like. 
yes, I live around here. Like, they do the <laughs> whole thing every time, and I just want to no, be this like... Is just my favourite gas station. Flew all the way over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's got amnesia, and she forgets every day, like that Adam Sandler movie or something like that, because she never remembers this. There's just something fucking wrong with her. <laughs> Have you ever had, like, one of the horrible... I guess gas station employees where something comes to like three dollars and five cents and you give them four dollars and a nickel and just the look behind their eyes is like they're trying to solve that fucking math equation from goodwill hunting where they're like it's only 305 and he gave me 405 this is way too much money sir like <laughs> three <laughs> chess all of a sudden in their dude I, in fairness like 15-year-old me wasn't particularly good at that. Right? And, and it wasn't 305 to 405. Like, that one we're all on top of. But, you know, the, the thing costs like $9.17. And they're like, oh, here's a quarter. And it's like, fuck. You know? <laughs> the machine already told me they need 83 cents in return. Now I've got 25 cents extra. And I have to figure this out on my own. You know? Woody it's has too many cents. <laughs> if Woody gives eight cents back to Susan, yeah. how many cents will Woody? And I have to, uh, like, well, I, fair, I have to put in that position. That's something you do to the clerk. <laughs> yeah, but that would be it. It would be like seventeen. They just throw a quarter on it so that it, like, it'll be like a dollar and a few. And yeah, I'm just like, dude, like I don't know. I never had. I, I would just have and to figure know, it out. You, it sure. makes you know that a machine would be more effective than you. Yeah, you know, yeah, way like, more I'd be effective. better off if I was just a vending machine. <laughs> for sure i went to uh ju just talking about this ridiculous nonsense i had have you ever heard of the restaurant wing stop yeah or, no so i had never heard of it before i kind of thought it was more like a subway kind of place where you go in and you pick out what wings you want and they kind of quickly bundle it up and send you on your way uh it's not really the case you go in you order and they like make them super fresh so they're really fucking good i went in uh at one point this week and this dude in front of me ordered a fuck ton of wings and they went back there making them. The guy sat down in the waiting area by me. The lady who had it, like, 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later even, takes the, the fucking wings, just gives them to some lady sitting down. Like, a mistake. And there was, like, maybe five minutes past. This lady's already digging into these wings because flavors are of no, no concept to her. These are my <laughs> wings! And she starts eating them. And this dude sees it after he goes back up there. And he's like, I've been waiting. Where are my wings? And they're like, are you Steven? They're like, yeah. Oh, and you see a little, like, conversation with the employees where you know they're saying, like, oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> fuck, that lady over there. We accidentally gave Susan Steven's order, and Steven is now without order. And he's like, <laughs> you gave my order to that lady over there, didn't you? And <laughs> he's like, yes, we did. We are, I'm so sorry that we gave your order to that woman. We're going to put everything else in the back burner and get yours done again. And so I'm sitting there like, oh, okay, yeah, my time's worth nothing, whatever. <laughs> I sit there, I wait, another 20 minutes, another 25 minutes goes by. I've been at a fucking wing stop now for, all, for like 50 minutes with no wings, and this guy goes back up. They have a screaming match between each other, where it's basically just the manager saying, like, calm down, sir. Like, if you're going to curse, you can get right out of here. If, you, if you're going to curse, you can get right out I of here. I hate that. At least 10 times, because this guy kept going like, I come here all the fucking time, and I spend a lot of fucking money on fucking chicken wings and they were yelling at each other hey, and eventually was he a this, big guy uh the the manager was was smaller than the customer customer okay. was like about my size and yeah. customer leaves and i just think all right thank god i guess the guy just thought fuck this i'm not even gonna get my wings i'm leaving guy comes back and i guess he must have called the police <laughs> because police <laughs> were with him he called and i don't know what he said to them to get the police to show up because you can't just call and say I'm at a wing stop and they gave all of my teriyaki to this whore <laughs> over here and now I'm I am wingless and because like, so he had to lie to get them there. basically then I had to wait even longer as cops came in and were like what's going on here and they're like uh, well there's no uh, we accidentally gave this gentleman's wings to some one else and the cops just kind of like sir just step outside to the guy to the customer and i guess he took him outside and must have said something to the effect of sir i'm a police officer i'm not here to to mitigate your chicken wing mi issues and uh then the guy just left just left without his wings and uh, i ended up getting mine but it was just i it was weird to sit there and watch because i was thinking the whole time all right when fucking ashton kutcher burst through that door i'm gonna be the guy that said i knew it was fake you <laughs> asshole <laughs> it, it's Literally unbelievable, but I thought that was interesting. Wingstop, oh, place though, great wings. Oh, were they worth the wait? No, no, not that. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> well, oh, next time. That sounds long. awful. God.
Wax. Doesn't come in. When you're coming up I like with... Think, I like to think that the woman sits there all day and just says every order of hers. <laughs> right. I'm Steven. Technically, I ain't stealing. <laughs> yeah, I'm trans next customer in line. Yeah, <laughs> I identify as. Yeah, if you were like, Susan and your, Rachel. Like, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wex, when you're making music, do you ever get inspired by someone else and realize that everything you're coming up with is just like imitating that guy? 